because we are kings and our words matter. your name high in this land this morning your name is lifted high in this church oh God and we lift your name high because your name is greater than every other name your name is greater than every sickness your name is greater than every mountain your name is greater than every giant and we hold up your banner high Lord we thank you for your presence is in this place Move mightily in this place. Let's put our hands together and praise God this morning, everybody. Let's clap our hands and sing. You guys have to sing it after me. And we're going to continue lifting the name of Jesus high in this place. So with a smile on your faces. Clapping your hands to sing it together. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name. Sing Lord, after I me. Lift your name on high. I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you paid from the 
cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name. You came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my death today. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Keep clapping your hands, everybody. Sing that again. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. You came, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. We're gonna go through a portion where you guys gotta move your hands and your feet. Are you ready to do that this morning? So we're gonna lift up our hands and praise our God. Gonna lift Him higher, you guys, higher. and higher. higher. Gonna lift Him higher, higher, and higher. higher. Gonna lift Him higher, higher, and higher. higher. Lift Him higher, higher, and higher. higher. Gonna lift Him higher, higher, and higher. Everybody, higher. gonna lift Him higher. higher. And higher, higher, gonna lift him higher, and higher, and higher, 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 higher. lift up Jesus in this place, and higher, you came, you came from heaven to earth, to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my death you pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord I lift your name, you came from heaven, to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my death to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord I lift your name Lord I lift your name on high 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 Let's put our hands together and lift up Jesus in this place. Higher than all our problems, all our difficulties, for he has conquered. Amen? Amen. And you and I are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. Reality check this morning is that he loves you. Irrespective of what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're ever going to do. Amen? Amen? For he is a good God. Has he been good to you today? Yes. Nice weather, he's definitely good. Has he been good to you this month? Yes. We're just starting and we're going to celebrate his birth soon. Has he been good to you this year? Yes. He's always good. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. When King Jehoshaphat went to fight against the three kings in 2 Chronicles 20, you read that he sent the singers and the musicians ahead of the army. Now you would assume that that's, that that's a very foolish thing to do. You're one king, your army is totally outnumbered, you're covered from all sides. Yet he chooses to send the singers and the musicians in front. And what do they sing? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. And the Bible says that as they started to sing and praise, not after they finished, but as they started to sing and praise God, God set ambushes 
against the enemies god made the enemies fight against each other and they were totally massacred and all israel had to do was go in and take the plunder out he said be still and see the salvation of the lord so are we going to be still and see his work in our lives amen. this morning amen. amen three days they plundered all which god had won for them and they came back victorious amen, amen. everything which the devil stole jesus plundered for you and i on the cross amen. all you have to do is believe and receive it by faith amen, amen. we're going to sing about god's goodness right now so remember all the good things which he has done and he will take us far amen god is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good god is good all the time let's put our hands together and sing god is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good god is good all the time if you're walking through the valley if you're walking through the valley and there are shadows all around do not fear he will guide you he will keep you safe and sound he has promised to never leave you nor forsake you and his word is true god is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good god is good all the time we were sinners so unworthy we were sinners so unworthy still for us he chose to die fill us with his holy spirit now we can stand and testify that his love is everlasting and his mercy they will never end god is good all the time he plays song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good god is good all the time though i may not understand though i may not understand all the plans you have for me my life is in your hands through the eyes of faith i can clearly see god is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good god is good all the time let's sing it one last time with a smile on your faces god is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine god is good god is good god is good he's so good god is good he's so good all the time amen if he's been good to you put your hand 
hands together and give him all the praise. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Isn't he a good God? And the Bible says that he never leaves us, he never forsakes us. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says that God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, you and I can boldly say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Amen. Amen. And the Bible, in another place, it says, if God is for us, then who can be against us? No situation, no mountain, no demon, no sickness, nothing can stand against our God. Amen. Amen. For he is greater, higher, and bigger than all our problems. Amen. Amen. You and I serve such a great God. Many times we look at our storms and then we look at God and say, God, did you see my storm? It really is big. But the thing which you and I ought to be doing is look at our God, understand who He is and then look at our storms and say how big our God is. Amen. Amen. So as we sing and worship Him this morning, know that Jesus has already given us the victory. You and I are more than conquerors, victors in and through Him. Amen. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? Sing it out loud. And if our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what? And if our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us. Then what can stand again? What are you turn into wine? Let's worship Jesus this morning. What are you turn into wine? Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you And none like you morning our God our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome in power our God and our God what are you turn Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you, our God. And our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. And our God, our God is greater. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher. God is healer, awesome in power, our God, and our God. This is worshiping.
come this morning, open your mouth and declare victory over your situations. He has already conquered and he is with us. So what can stand against us? Sing it together with me. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can and if our God and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? Then what can stand again? Then what can stand again? Just a church. Sing it along with me, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, and our God. Lord, we declare your greatness in our lives. We thank you for you are going to do a great new thing. All we can say is thanks for all that you've done, for all that you're doing and for all that you're going to do. How great is our God Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Sing it together, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. No, see how great, how great is our God. The splendor of the King, the splendor of the King. Lord in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? No, see how great, how great is our God. From age to age he stands And time is in his hand Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The Godhead three in one Father Spirit Son, lion and the lamb, lion and the lamb, how great is our God, sing with me, how great 
is our God, and all we'll see our rain, our rain is our God. Let's worship Him this morning. How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? No see how great, how great is our God. He's the name above all names. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great. and praise Him. Praise this great God that we serve. Oh Lord, show us how great You are. Just continue to praise Him by lifting your hands, your voices. Just tell Him in whatever words you can. We pray, oh Lord, that You would show us more and more how great You are. Everything about You is great, oh Lord. Your love is great. Help us to understand it, O Lord. Your power is great. It's always greater than we think it to be, O Lord. So much more. There is so much more to you and I pray that you would open our eyes this morning. That we would see a little bit more of your greatness. Of your majesty, of your glory, O Lord. Like Moses said, show me your glory, we pray. Show us more of your glory, O Lord. But if we can get only get a glimpse of who you are, how good you are, how merciful you are, how gracious, how loving you are, our lives can never be the same. If we can only get a glimpse into your great plans and purposes for our lives, your great plans and purposes for this church, for the universal body of Christ, how you want to change the world through us. We will never be the same and our city will never be the same. Show us, O Lord. We open our hearts, we open our minds to you this morning. We say, speak to us, Lord. Let revelation flow in this place. Holy Spirit, move mightily in this place. Use your word and change our lives this morning. We want to hear you speak to us. So I pray that you yourself would speak to us through your servant. Oh Lord. We want to hear your words, Jesus. Speak and build us up. We thank you for your wonderful presence is in this place, oh Lord. We thank you that you've brought us here with a purpose and that you will fulfill that purpose this morning. We come at the rest of this service into your mighty hands. 
in Jesus name we pray amen you may be seated we welcome all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning we want to extend a special welcome to anyone who's here for the first time if you are here for the very first time would you please raise your hand wherever you're seated, please? Just raise your hand. Just keep your hand raised for a few seconds until you receive a brochure from one, one of our ushers. Even if you're seated outside or upstairs, if you're here for the first time, I just want you to raise your hand for a few seconds. Wait till we give you a brochure and then you can put your hand down. The brochure has our church timings, our contact details, information about our TV programs, a little welcome note from our pastor, and so on. Inside that brochure, you'll find a white card. Please fill it out with your name and address and other details. Wait till the end of the service. Please take that white card outside to the newcomer's desk. If you give it to the person in the newcomer's desk, they will give you a free CD. That CD has about 10 messages of Pastor Sam Chelladere. That's about 10 hours of preaching. We want you to have it. They'll also give you a free copy of our Tamil magazine, Vitrium Varvum. All you have to do is simply fill out the white card, wait till the end of the service, take it outside to the newcomer's desk, receive your free CD and free magazine. On behalf of Pastor Sam and the entire AFT family, I welcome you to this church and I hope that you will continue to come and experience for yourself the wonderful things that God is doing in and through this church. All right, it's time to give to the Lord this morning. Amen. If you're watching online and you want to give with us, you can click on that online giving link and follow the instructions. If you brought offering for the special church project, you can just wait till the end of the service and drop it in the big boxes. There's two, one on stage, one outside in the portico. Let's all say this before we give. Jesus said, Give, and it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men pour into your bosom. I believe what Jesus said. Lord, you are my source. I look up to you, and so I give to you. Amen. As you give, uh, let's make some important announcements, not our usual announcements. Our Christmas and New Year services are coming up, as you know. And uh, the thing is, both Christmas and New Year service will not be held here. Will not be held here. They will be held like last year in Jesus Calls Vanagaram. So the Christmas service on the 25th of December will be at 6 a.m. Only one service at Jesus Calls Vanagaram. <coughs> Similarly, New Year service on December 31st will start at 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Again, at Jesus Calls, Vanagaram, we will serve communion in the New Year service and everything will be over by 12.30. Also, you need to note that three Tuesday evening services during that Christmas and New Year time have been cancelled. Right? Let me give you the dates. 17th, December 17th, which is Tuesday, December 24, which is Tuesday, December 31, which is also Tuesday. Those three Tuesday evenings are cancelled because of the Christmas and New Year uh, services coming up there. So please make a note of those changes and inform others as well. We're very happy this morning to have Dr. Sam Kamalesan with us. You know, in the Christian world in India and uh, uh, in Chennai as well as all over India, uh, Dr. Sam Kamalesan is a very known person. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, it was a household name. Everybody knew. <laughs> Here, before the days of television, everybody knew who Dr. Sam Kamalaisen was. He was known for his preaching and effective ministry that he carried on here at the Emmanuel Methodist Church here in Prasovakam um, for many years and um, impacted the lives of many young people of that generation. Uh, it's unforgettable how God used him in those days mightily in this land. After that, he uh, went to work for World Vision. Uh, in America, 
and was the vice president uh, carrying out um, uh, pastor's seminar all over the world for World Vision. In that he traveled all the continents of the world in many countries, uh, all over Asia, Africa, Europe and uh, uh, Eastern Europe back in those days and the communist countries and uh, South America and, uh, and the North American continent. Uh, in so many countries, uh, he's held a pastor's seminar. So everywhere you go, all the pastors uh, seem to know him and Christians uh, seem to know him. I remember uh, Americans used to ask me when, I, when they learned that I was from Chennai, or I was from India, they'll immediately ask me, do you know Dr. Sam Kamalasan? So, uh, he had a very effective ministry back in those days, impacted lives of people, impacted my life also, so I'm very happy to have him here with us in our midst. He's going to share the word of God with us. Last year, he came, with, uh, came here with his wife. This time, uh, she has gone to be with the Lord in the month of June, and he has come by himself. Uh, um, in the, even though we miss her, uh, we pray that God will strengthen him and help him to continue in the years to come the wonderful ministry that he's always been doing so effectively. Please welcome Dr. Sam Kamalais. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very grateful for Pastor Chalutrai for not only the introduction but fundamentally asking me to be with you in this service. Now, you may not receive the news as happily as I am enjoying being here. To you, it may be a disappointment that Pastor Chalutra is not preaching. <laughs> I fully understand that. But um, things as they are, I am not in control. If you must be angry, find somebody else to be angry with. <laughs> Thank you very much. I enjoyed the worship part of the service, both services. The one before, which was in Tamil, was equally uplifting. And it's good to be always in this congregation to worship. God has placed us in this city at this time for a purpose. Is that right? If you have your Bible, I will make the references as I go along. Would you again be patient with me and check me out? Is that all right? I, I ask your participation and uh, when I say is that all right, I hope that your consent is what you mean. God has placed you here in this city for a purpose. God called you. God put you here and God has revealed his plans to you so that in the consequence of your obedience you will transform history. For the God of the Bible acts in human history. Let me take you to some of the passages that will probably make sense. Mark chapter 1 verse 14 to 20. Mark chapter 1 verse 14 to 20. In this passage, Jesus calls the earliest disciples. There are four of them that are called here in this passage. Simon and his brother Andrew, and then John and his brother, what was his name? Huh? James. James, right. Yes. A couple of brothers who are being called. In the calling, there is a difference. Before we look into that, will you pray with me? 
Dear Lord, we thank you that as we assemble here, you are already here among us. It is your purpose to gather those of us who are here in order to give us the word that you have for us. We pray that as we know you, your presence among us, that presence would influence our lives. Where two or three are gathered in your name, you promise to be among them. And Lord Jesus, come, speak to us. We pray in the name of God's only Son, our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, Jesus spoke about the call. He said very plainly, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I will make you to live with consequence in history. You will transform other people's life and history will change. We don't live non-consequentially. When you follow Jesus Christ, he transforms your history and the history of those with whom you connect. The statement he made has five parts to it. The first part is, there is a kingdom. Time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is here. There are a new set of values which are now in force. The kingdom of God has come. And hence, you can change. You can enter into this kingdom and become a person who lives a new set of values. And I will work with you in that change. This is his commitment to each one of us. The kingdom of God is the reason for our call. I, I, I am not a, a, a stellar guy that he is looking for. I am a very ordinary fellow. But he wants to make an ordinary person's life of deep consequences for the kingdom. Each one of us sitting here in this congregation this morning are intentionally his tool to change human history. Chennai need not be the same because you are here. Thank you. Some of you are resonating. You are of consequence as far as God is concerned. He's not just casually saying hi to you and then going away. Sunday morning worship is not an end in itself. It is a beginning for the whole week. God has purposes to be fulfilled through you. The kingdom of God is here. And then the interaction is personal, intimate. You, me, let's go. You, me, let's go. It is as intimate as it can be. If Jesus is walking in history right now, he will do this to you when he meets you, when he runs into you. Here this morning in the church, it is not just as if we came, we sat, and went through a process and we are going back. But he is saying to you, I want you. I will change you. I will make your life a means for transforming history around you. The city will not be the same. Do you, do you believe that? Come on, man, keep telling whatever you have to tell. Time is wasting. No, that's not the way to deal with it. He is saying to you, I want to use you to change history right now. Not only your history, the history of your family 
and the history of the place where you are working. I placed you there so that it will be of some consequence. You, me, let's go. The time when he made an impression on me, it, I think on previous occasions I've told you, it's here in Purasavakam that I felt his nudging and tapping on my shoulder. I was a student here in Madras Veterinary College and uh, God impressed me that I need to get the message over to the people. I became a believer through the work of a friend of mine, a classmate, who was a Hindu, but he became a believer and he was a marvelous Christian. After that, when I was walking in Purusavakam, his simple question was, don't these people need to know what you know? If he asked you a question like that, what would you say? You, you're wondering, you know, this guy is dragging me into something and I better be careful. <laughs> Wouldn't he ask you, no, you got a lot of people in your office, should they not know what you know? And if you tell him yes, he's going to say, let's go. That's what he told me. I said, these people, they, they are going in 20 different directions. How do I stop them? He said, sing. They will stop. I said, not in a street corner. He said, why not? They said, they'll think I'm a fool. He said, you are a fool. <laughs> now you laugh at it. The way he concluded that way was, if you believe that I'm a savior to the rest of the world, you are a stupid fool. Are you making sense out of that? If you are a stupid fool, what are you waiting for? You can't get any fuller than this. Go ahead. I found a dustbin because there was less people around a dustbin. And then I shut my eyes because I couldn't stand the embarrassment of my making a fool of myself. Then I sang. When I opened my eyes, there was a crowd. You try it in Purusavakam. <laughs> Even if two dogs fight, people will stop. <laughs> and I had to do something. Simple thing that I could tell them was, he is alive. I know he is alive. You too can find out that he is alive. That is true, isn't it? Yes. Come on. Yes. Is that not true? Yes. Why not tell it? And my responsibility was over. I was ready to run. A fella got hold of my hand and said, Hey, I want to know. Tell me. That's the beginning. Three and a half years after I went into the street sometimes three times a week and I saw people coming to know Jesus Christ. Nobody, nobody broke a limb of mine. They said they will, but they never. There is a purpose in you knowing him and that purpose is you will make him known to others. You will communicate. You, me, let's go. I will make you. I can't change. I can't carry the burden of the responsibility of continuous change. I'm not able. He is saying, it's my responsibility, not yours. I will make you change. This is how the consequences of our congregation 
and its impact on the city will be felt. History must change. History cannot continue just stalemate as it is. It is our children and our responsibility. The calling confers a new identity upon us. We are his people. We are the ones who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have a value system that put together spells the kingdom of God, the people who live under the rule of God. A value system that's very different from the confused mess that prevails as a society to which we belong. The calling confers an identity and that identity is the kingdom of God, the rule of God. When the calling is accepted, Peter gives a definition about the people and a description. If you have your Bible, will you turn with me to the first epistle of Peter, chapter 2, 8, 9, and 10. Verses 8, 9, and 10. May I read from J.B. Phillips' translation. It will be different from the Bible that you carry, but um, believe me, it is the Bible. First epistle of Peter, chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. Yes, they stumbled at the word of God, for in their hearts they were unwilling to obey, which makes stumbling a foregone conclusion. But you, you are God's chosen generation, his royal priesthood, his holy nation, his peculiar people. All the old titles of God's people now belong to you. It is for you now to demonstrate the goodness of him who has called you out of darkness into his amazing light. In the past, you were not a people at all. Now, you are the people of God. In the past, you had no experience of this message, but now it is intimately yours. Hallelujah. This is true. This is what we are. If it is intimately mine and yours, there is no excuse for not living it out. The calling confers an identity. We are the people of God and we have a consequence in the way we value the values of the kingdom of God. The second thing is, when Jesus enters your life and my life, he brings with him a compassion that we did not know before. The word compassion is a radical form of criticism. You want me to tell, say that again? Are you listening? Yes. Really, are you listening? Yes. Compassion is a radical form of criticism. Did you ever think so? It is so. Compassion normally is thought of as not being forceful. If you put a, a bomb and you blow everything up, now that is very significant. I'd like to do that. But compassion is more powerful than that. Compassion simply radically says, I don't agree with you. And because I don't agree with you, I will do what needs to be done. Let me repeat that definition again. Compassion is a radical form of criticism. 
It's not throwing things at the face of somebody else, but it is obeying at the face of other people's criticism. The challenge of a call from within that says, you can't pass this by. Do you remember the man that we call Good Samaritan? Hey, do you always look like this? Are you giving, <laughs> giving me a special treatment? Do you remember the story called the Good Samaritan? Yes. yes. There are several laws in that story. The first law is the law of the jungle. When the robbers jumped the traveler who was a merchant, robbed him, beat him up, left him half dead and walked away. That's the law of the jungle. You got what I want. I don't care if you want to give it. I'm going to take it away from you. The second law is the law of rationalization. When the Pharisee came, he looked at the guy who was beaten up and he said to get messed with this, I'll get messed up. I'll walk to the other side, walk away. And he walked away. We rationalize very often in our society. We are very articulate when we are worshiping on Sunday. And when someone gives us an opportunity, we even shout hallelujah. But out, out in the street, we know where the other side is. And coolly walk away. And if somebody asks you, why did you ignore that? You tell them, Messi. Are you with me? Yes. yes. Messi. The law of rationality. But the third law is the law of compassion. If you read about the Samaritan, it says in the text of the Word of God, moved with compassion, he went to the fellow who was beaten up, poured wine on his wound. That's a good way to use wine. <laughs> poured wine on the wound, sterilized that, then he picked him up and put him in his new Maruti. Even the plastic from the salesman had not been taken away. All the dirt, blood, some things are more important than brand new Marathis. <laughs> You're staring at me. Where did they bring this guy from? <laughs> this is the word of God. Listen to me. This is the word of God. Compassion is a radical form of criticism. You think you are radical when you shout and criticize the existing order. No. It's a compassionate one who acts, who is the radical. And you better follow that. <clears throat> Young people, so many of you sitting, you want to do something? Act in compassion. He put him in his marudi, took him to an innkeeper, paid him. And then he said, if you incur more expenditure, when I come back, I'll meet it. His credit was good because the innkeeper said, that's okay. Amazing. It is a valuable citizen of the society that is part of the transformation. Compassion compels involvement. You can't ignore. You got to do something. Young people, if the present day trend toward election and other things is going to continue as it is, and you decide it will not go this way, it will change, participate with compassion. Let the compassion of Jesus lead you to put your hand on the plow and do something something 
little thing. It doesn't have to be a big one. The next thing that I see as the qualification for a people of God to transform history is the obedience to a commission that clarifies the future. Jesus gave a commission to his disciples. He said, go ye into all the world, meet everyone who has not known this, communicate to them what you know. It is not just an announcement, but it is a patient sitting down and saying to someone, there is a newness, there is a new order. We can be part of that new order. And the one who promises to enable us is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. A commission that clarifies the future. Let me give you just a few alternatives if we were to follow him in this commission. We will not look to prestige and position, but we will give ourselves to be servant leaders. There are many books written about servant leaders. One that is used very often by corporations is the book called Servant Leader by a man called Greenleaf, who worked in India quite extensively. It's a good book, but the classic definition of the servant leader is the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not come to be lording it over people. He came to be a servant among servants. And his definition is, if you want to be the boss, then be a servant. It goes against the grain. Nobody ever believes that this is the way to the top position. But the top position is empty without the qualifying encouragement that the purpose of that position is to serve and promote people that they may increase. Young people, if you want to change the order, follow the Nazarene. In everything, be excellent. If you play cricket, do it the best you can. Be the next Tindalkar. If you do mathematics, be a guy equal to the legendary Ramanujam. Do the top, but don't think that that excellence makes you a boss over people. Pick up the towel and begin to say, I, I am to serve you. Will you give me an opportunity? Do this actually, and the world will turn around and tell you, you are a marvel. It will happen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Are you? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm amazed. I thought I lost you. <laughs> it's not prestige, but servanthood. The second pair of powers pair of things is, it is not power, but the power of the cross. The cross has a power. And the cross is the expression of power for you and me. The cross, we say, transforms. What is the transforming power in the cross? When um, he was standing um, before Pilate, Pilate asked him, are you a king? Jesus did not appear like a king, but he owned to Pilate that there is a kingdom. 
And that kingdom will topple the show of power that was Pilate's. Now that is power. Somewhere when you and I say the cross is the means of salvation, we are saying that the cross reversed what is the concept of power and I belong to that. Are we? Do we really say that? In the show of everyday power, within the structure to which we all belong, do we express that? The power of the cross, parochialism, do you, do you, I can't ask do you know that word, I need to ask you, do you understand the meaning of that word? Parochialism is simply put, groupism. So very common within our country. Everywhere you go, there's a little group. And they gang together, don't they? And they leave people out. That they gang together maybe is okay. But if they don't leave people out, maybe it's okay. But they don't. Parochialism is groupism that has no where to go. It has no place in history. It destroys. We who belong to Jesus don't belong to parochial tendencies. Let me endorse what I'm saying. In the are you still with me? In the 13th chapter of the book of Acts, let's just turn to it so that you won't sleep all the way through. In the 13th chapter of the book of Acts, in the opening verses, there is a description of the congregation in Antioch. Do you see that? 13th chapter of the book of Acts. Have you opened your Bible? Yes. All right. Now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Normally, the prophet emphasized something that the teacher may not particularly like. The prophet spoke about revolutionary concepts. The teacher spoke about the stable concepts. They both were important. Here, in Antioch, they didn't work against one another. They worked together. In a congregation like this one, prophets and teachers complement each other because they both are speaking about the one community, which is the kingdom of God. And who are these Barnabas? Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucas, Lucius, of Cyrene, Menemen, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Each one distinctly different, probably representing different expressions within the same society. Where are they? They are all together and they are working together. In the assembly, we come from various expressions of the society. But inside the assembly, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we complement one another. Did you lose me? No, not yet? We complement, we don't work against one another. What happens in the society is neutralized here because of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The differences then complement one another and we come out as the strength of the entire community around us. They who have found it impossible to tolerate one another now celebrate each other because we are in Christ Jesus. 
I thought somebody's going to say hallelujah. Is it difficult to understand? You don't come in here to worship Jesus and then go back to be the same divisive person in the society. Are you listening? You go back as one who has been reconciled through Jesus Christ to the polarities that were irreconcilable before. Thank you. I'm glad you came this morning. <laughs> In the family, polarities. We come and worship here, go back and celebrate the same polarities. What happened here? Nothing. Did Jesus mean anything? Can he bring reconciliation? The congregation is a place where that which is irreconcilable because of the presence of Jesus finds a resolution. And we who worship together go back to live out that resolution so that the society at large who will never be able to find it see it in us, visible. And then they say, how do you do this? The guy who led me to Jesus Christ was a person like that. And there were those who criticized him because they couldn't find any other alternative. Most of the guys who criti criticized him belonged traditionally to the church. Are you listening to me? Yes. You, you know in the streets in Purasawakam, we got an overpopulation of dogs, right or wrong. We don't know who raises them. Maybe a, a, a mother dog had a litter and then safeguarded them and then abandoned them and they populated. Everywhere there are dogs and they would hound any new dog that comes in there. Uh, maybe you're too busy to notice all of this. <laughs> it's happening in every street in Purzavakam, if you take time. Any new dog, the whole population will begin to uh, sing in various uh, uh, quality of voice. And the poor guy will not know what to do with it. If a man on college campus becomes a believer, they who belong to ch the church feel that he, by contrast, is showing them off. And they are the guys who hound him. This boy who led me to Christ was hounded like that. But he answered them extremely softly and politely. He didn't pull back. He didn't say, I, I, I don't know Jesus Christ because of these guys. He would say to them, if you knew Jesus, you wouldn't talk like this. He won my admiration. And it was this that made me ask him, hey Shankar, can I know this Jesus? Shankar is now with the Lord, but he led me to the Lord. And if he hadn't, I probably wouldn't be standing here today before you. Small groupism that hounds people, he changes me from that small groupism to the solidarity of the marginalized. They are everywhere. And the Christian is the one who is part of this marginalized and he celebrates Jesu Christu with them. Are, <laughs> are you listening to me? Yes. 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 He has placed us in this marvelous congregation 
so that we will be able to bring those who don't belong anywhere, who have no place to go. And in the name of Jesus, we should be inviting them that they may become part of this robust community of believers. Possessions. Possessions per se doesn't make sense. But if you possess your possession, then it makes sense. There was a man called Zacchaeus. Do you know him? Right. He climbed a tree. And Jesus came and stood underneath the tree and called him by name. I'm surprised he didn't fall down. Oh, how does he know my name? Everybody would ask that question. And the next thing is, if he knows my name, how much more does he know about me? I'm a rascal. Does he know everything? Hey Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm not here to accuse you. I want to go to your home. In all Madras, in all Chennai, my home? I'm not going to ask you why. Come on, I'm ready. No reason. If you're coming to my home, good night, what am I waiting for? He took him to his home. Something happened. The gospel account doesn't say what happened. He jumps up and says, half my goods I give to feed the poor. The other half, I won't keep it. I'll do restitution fourfold. What happened, Zacchaeus? I discovered the liberating power of the one who is the savior. Money, possessions don't possess me anymore. He has given me the power to possess my possessions. The word possession means that you possess it, right? Yes. But if it possesses you, it's a misnomer, right? Yes. Yeah. You're the one who's being possessed. Who will reverse it? Only the Lordship of Jesus Christ can reverse it. Nothing else can. Passion, instead of being torn by passion, I can bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. All of this is the promise of the kingdom. All of this is how the congregation takes the message of the kingdom to the city outside. But when the work is done finally, and when we take the message of Jesus to the city, and I believe we will, when we take the message of Jesus to the city, the one who really is credited with the work is not we, but the one who resides in us the blessed Holy Spirit himself. It's he who gives us wisdom. It's he who brings us together in proper relationship so that the being together will be to strengthen the forward trust. It does happen in small measures and as a congregation, if we decide this is what we will do. It will happen in a large measure. I must close. Let me speak about the four steps in the process of the Holy Spirit beginning to use you and me. A couple got married. They fell in love. There is no law against that. You can fall in love. They fell in love and were married. But in, uh, as sometimes it happens in a love relationship, she was enormously large, he was enormously thin. <laughs> oh, love is blind, blind, they say. 
And so they, they went ahead, got married. After marriage, they had the first argument. Don't believe it if they say you will never argue with your... Thank you very much. <laughs> very good. That was a spontaneous laughter. <laughs> they had the first argument. She took a hockey stick. <laughs> she had the bulk behind her anyhow. And he had to run. He ran and uh, crawled underneath the coffee table. That's the only place she wouldn't be able to come. <laughs> she stood there with the hockey stick and said, Hey John, come on out of there or else I'm coming after you. John, knowing that it's an impossibility, <laughs> said to her, Jane, know that I am the boss in this house. Right now, I decide that I will stay under this coffee table and I'm not coming out. Now, he thought he saved face. We do this to ourselves. We are defeated. We know that we are defeated. We don't accept it before the Lord. We are underneath the coffee table and we think that we are there because we chose to be under the coffee table. Own your beaten black and blue and you need the Lord. Without Him, there is no victory. Amen. Please do more than just Amen. Come out. Come out from under the coffee table. First step. Second thing, own, own where you need help. Categorically tell him, Lord, I am where I am for a long time. I come to church, I listen to the word, but I have not had the courage to own it to myself or to you. Please, I confess it. Categorically, own it. Third step. When you have emptied, receive the Holy Spirit. Let him fill you. Jesus said, if I go to my Father, I will send you the Comforter. He will not leave you. He will be with you always. Not when you are strong alone, but when you are weak, He won't leave you. He will remind you. He will turn you around. I'm sharing what is my experience. He will not leave you. He will turn you around and tell you, here is the way out. Come on. Is there scripture for this? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 let me read it to you no temptations are oh, pardon me no temptation has overtaken you except such is common except such is common to man all men, all women. But God is faithful. You can depend on God to do this. God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. He checks before the temptation comes to you. And if he permits it come to come to you, you should know I can take it. My God will not test me above my ability. Are you listening to me? My God will not test me above my ability. So I can win over this temptation. Read on with me. But with the temptation, 
will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That means any temptation that comes to me, I don't have to fall and sin. I can conquer it. Am I right? Yes. Am I right? Yes. Then why don't you? Very often it's because I, at that moment, I don't really realize that I can be a conqueror. There was a young man by name Joseph. You remember in the Old Testament? When he was a teenager, his boss's wife tempted him with a temptation that most male of the species at that age find it difficult to conquer. But Joseph slipped out of his garment and to him victory was more important than even decency. Ran away. He had to go through the process of proving that his word was true. Are, what all do you have to do to conquer? Yes, if conquest is yours, you need to do whatever it takes in order to conquer. I hope you're listening to me, yes. young person. I hope you're listening to me. Temptation doesn't mean sin. Temptation is the proving point as to the level of your ability to stand. When you conquer, you say, praise the Lord. And you teach others. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit, is the one who fills you and energizes you. Confess your need. Confess the areas of, wake, of, of defeat. Receive the power. The power is the Spirit's power. It's not yours. Receive. And finally, release the power. Don't keep feeling your spiritual pulse beat. If he has got you, he's got you. If he's got you, he's got you. Release, trust him, and victory is his, and you will enjoy it. Are you with me? I would like to pray with you. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Father in heaven, we thank you that in the historic moment in which we live now in our city, you have intentions to use us to make us the leaven that leavens the whole lump, that you would change the values of the society because we live in this society. Father, we want you to. I don't want to live carelessly. I don't want to lose this moment in history. I am here. Lord, please use me. I open my life to you. I confess my weakness because I look to your strength. Lord, fill me. Energize me. And then Use me. May history 
history around me which may seem petty and small but it's nevertheless history may history where you have placed me change may I change this morning Lord Jesus hear my prayer if you say brother Sam God did make sense to me this morning and I would like to I would like to f come out from under the uh, coffee table I would like to empty myself I would like to venture with the God of Joseph with the God of Peter Andrew James and John follow me I will make you I would like to brother Sam include me in this closing prayer if you would say that would you raise your hand so that I could pray for you wherever you are yes 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 Lord you see hands I don't see anything beyond that but you see hearts minds some of us have been long laboring at this point Lord please come in take over lead us from our hiding place lead us to that point in history which is ours given to us by you and Lord make us in obedience stand tall may history not only our history but the history immediately around us may it change O oh Lord because of the power of the resident Holy Spirit of God we pray this prayer in the name that cannot be refused even the name of your Son our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ and all God's people said Amen Amen, Amen. God bless you palms open hands down that is the pasture it's not grabbing things like this it's transferring responsibility to him are you listening yes, yes. palms open hands down will he take over he promised he will the Lord be with you and bless you thank you Shall we all stand together? Amen. Very powerful truth that you heard today, right? The whole point is, this whole thing about this Christian life is this, that we are transformed and then everything around us is transformed. Amen? Amen. That's what it's all about. That's how God goes about working in this world. We as individuals are transformed and then we impact a transformation in this world. God has kept us here as a church to bring a transformation in this city, in this country, in this world. That's why God has kept us here. Every one of you and I are here to bring the transformation. Amen? Let's lift up our hands and give thanks to God. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the wonderful truth that has been presented to us so wonderfully today. We receive it with an open heart. May the Spirit of God continue to minister this to us. We are here for you, Lord. We are here to do your work. We are here 
about your kingdom it's all about your kingdom it's all about you the lord and what you want to do and we are here for you lord so we commit ourselves to you today to do what you want us to do go where you want us to go be what what you want us to be not pursuing just our agenda but pursuing your goals pursuing your purposes throughout our life every day every month every year even as we come to the end of this year father we realize that christian life is about living for you as kingdom people we belong to another kingdom we have another set of values we think differently we are different from all those that are around us and i pray that as people leave this place and go out today may they go out with that consciousness with this thought filling their hearts and minds and may this be worked out in their lives and through them in this world oh father and we give you all the glory and honor and praise in jesus name we pray now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of the father the fellowship of the holy spirit abide with each and every one of us for now and forevermore Amen.